Hi, welcome to my channel. The RFM M1240 Oshkosh MATV is probably one of the best 135 scale armor kits that I have ever made. It has excellent interior and overall details, options for two versions, and a nice photo etch fret. But the kit has its own flaws too, such as being overly engineered, and it's also highly complex. I recommend that any modeler who wants to make this should go in with a strategy. I've completed this model a while back. Here are my 10 takes if you plan to build one. The clear plastic for the windshields are too thick. If you plan to keep the original clear plastic, then you will get an ugly white rim that runs around the window and basically ruins the final appearance. You'll notice that the actual vehicle has a black rim. So as a solution, I made the rims black. I created clear plastic replacements using Tamiya Clear plow plates. The cabin seats for the crews are inaccurate. All of the reference that I found pointed to a different model. And I think the seats that came with the kit was a bit too simple. So I added some extra details. I made seating belts and buckles using Tamiya plow plates and masking tapes. The kit does not come with any radio set. And this is something optional when you buy the RFM kit. I was a little bit disappointed, but it is what it is. So if you're looking to having your version with a radio set, be sure you buy it. The basic kit has more than enough details. The engine block pretty much look like what I saw on the web. If you want to paint the engine, I suggest you look for better images online. Since I've gone this far building the model and also the engine, I decided to add extra plumbing and wiring to push up the detail a notch. You can choose to have the doors and engine cover opened or closed. You need to permanently fix the doors because they don't have any moving hinges but you can make the hood movable. Even though you can do that, the hinges are made of plastic. The model comes in two variants, either the Polish or the US Army versions. For me, I think the instruction was clear, but it would be still be nice if they made the instruction a little bit more clearer. I made several mistakes mixing up either the Polish or the US Army versions. It's mostly related to the details or nuances. The kit gives you two PE frets. They are not the most extensive, but they are more than sufficient. One thing to note is that most parts are one piece PEs that you have to bend to shape. They are a bit thick, but they already have embossed lines to help you guide in bending the item. This is good because that means you don't need any expensive PE bending tools. Another note I have is that they are easy to break, especially if you already bend them to shape. There are many small and tiny parts in the box. And I think some of the breakdowns of parts are unnecessary. And I think that the breakdowns are just for the sake of having a large part numbers. If I want to make this, then I have to build and paint in sub-assemblies. It means that I make the chassis, the cabin, the engine, the cargo area, the turret in separate sections, and then I would continue painting those parts. Then I would add those modules, those sub-assemblies into other parts, and then retouch the glued parts. This is the same goes with a, a photo etch. You paint the photo etch first, glue it on the surface, then you do some touch-ups. The plastic reacted badly when I did my weathering using oil-based thinners like enamel thinners or white spirit. The plastic became soft and they break easily. Using less thinner seems to improve the situation a bit. The kit came with five rubber tires. Some modelers do not like using these rubber tires and it turns out they're pretty good. I could easily airbrush the rubber. The paint held really well and also made uh, weathering too. So that's my 10 tips for you if you plan to build this kit. Hope they are useful. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.